Broadcasting from deep within occupied territory on the far left coast, you're listening to On The Move with Mac Worley III. Stand up, sneak out, and get on the move. And now your host, Mac Worley III. All right, we're back. So, at this point, we're going to go ahead and bring on our guest of the show here. We have Stephen Nielsen on the line, and we're going to be talking about his campaign and a bunch of other issues here. Hey, Stephen, you there? Absolutely. How are you doing today, Max? I'm doing really well. Thanks for joining us, by the way. I'm really happy to have you back on the show. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure to be back. I'm, uh, it's great. I'm kind of making the second round in a lot of shows that I've, uh, that I've done in the past, and uh, it's been great to uh, see my campaign kind of come into its own, but also see some of the shows that uh, you know, libertarian-minded individuals had started out with uh, you know, several months ago really coming into their own as well. So congratulations on the success that you've been having with the show, and uh, thanks for having me back again. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I, I really do appreciate that. And uh, so, so tell me some stuff that's, that you guys have been doing. What, what, what's been going on with your campaign? Uh, well, we are you know, a week and a half out from uh, the August 5th primary. Uh, since the last time I talked to you, uh, uh, we uh, became an official campaign, uh, you know, went uh, registered with the Secretary of State, uh, uh, had a, a Democrat also jump into the race. So it's a three-way race, um, and, uh, and we're actually looking to survive the primary um, the, the Democrat is a uh, marijuana party Democrat, uh, um, and uh, just hasn't been hasn't been performing well at all. Um, and so we're we're actually looking to uh, um, to kind of capitalize on on uh, you know uh, let's, let's call it a little bit of libertarian propaganda, if you will. That um, look, uh, you know, you've got a Republican, a Democrat, and a Libertarian, and and look who's advancing through to the uh, you know to the top two general. Uh, it's the Libertarian and the Republican. Um, so we're uh, we're making some great strides there, uh, and run with uh, with uh, the gas tax issue. Um, it's actually been a talking point uh, that we started in the state, and I've I've noticed a lot of uh, other libertarian candidates have picked up uh, uh, the talking point and, and the hard line on the gas tax increase. Uh, that's a bipartisan push um, from uh, from the incumbent and uh, and several. Um, uh, several uh, Republican uh, uh, supporters who are anti-incumbent uh, over on the east side of the state have actually started uh, a movement to, uh, uh, to use uh, the message that, that, begun, that began in my campaign uh, to kind of oust some of their, uh, their incumbents on the east side of the state. So uh, it, it's amazing to see, like I said, our campaign has really come into its own. We really found our message that's going to drive us through uh, to victory in, uh, in November. Um, and we're, we're actually changing the debate in Washington State right now. We are, we're, we are leading the message, um, and, and uh, it's nice to see some other campaigns uh, on the Republican side um, and the Libertarian side kind of falling in line with us. It's, uh, it really gives us a lot of, uh, lot of hope and encouragement that we're doing the right thing. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I just want to point out the fact to everyone that Stephen is the only candidate that I have come out uh, openly and endorsed right now. So uh, I, I really, really like your message, Stephen. I think you're a good guy. And I, I think if anybody uh, ha, you know, has a real, real shot at, at getting this, and I'm not, not belittling, belittling any of the other candidates out there. I, I really, really like a lot of the guys that, that are out there right now. For example, Chris Rockhold, Paul Addis, you know, Dave Steenson. I, I really like all these guys. But you know, I have only said so far, you are, are the one that I have endorsed. So I really hope that, that, that things go well for you guys. I'm, I'm stoked to see that your campaign is, is doing so well. And uh, I want to talk to you about some of these issues that you, that you just mentioned here, uh, you know, it's, especially for the primaries. Uh, what, can you explain for our listeners what exactly is involved in the primary process and what are you trying to achieve here? All right. So what we're trying to achieve is finishing in the top two. Uh, the way that Washington State works is for a primary, regardless of the number of candidates for any individual race, the top two vote getters are going to be uh, the two who advance on to the general election. So in my uh, in my instance, we've got a Republican, a Democrat, and a Libertarian, uh, or I should say, Libertarian, and then of course Republican, Democrat, in there as well. Um, and, and so uh, the top two vote getters from us three are are, are going to be moving on. In uh, like uh, Nick Kunkel up uh, up north in the Bellingham area, he's got. Uh, two Republicans, a Democrat, and a Libertarian. Uh, Chris Rockhold has got, uh, I believe, four people in his race as well. So there are there are a couple of uh, more complicated challenges. But in any one of the races across the state, because this is a top two general election state, 
the primary is extremely important, uh, and all we have to do is finish in the top two, and then it's a head-to-head -head race in the general election, and what the Libertarian Party has been uh, focusing on and trying to capitalize on this year um, is to eliminate the stigma of, of the third party as being a spoiler party. Because if we can survive for the general election, if we can make it through the primary, there is no spoiler. It's a head-to-head. -head. So, Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, as far as that, I, I really want to talk about that for a second. You know, it, in the past, I have kind of looked at it the same way it, it, as far as, you know, I, you know, I don't want to vote for a libertarian because I was concerned that it would take away, you know, put, uh, votes for, from the Republican Party and then only the Republican Party. And that would basically uh, just make it so that we have another Democrat in office. And, and for me. I have changed. I've changed so much on this, it, it, you know, th just throughout this year, really. Uh, and, and you know, I, I've I've never been comfortable with who I voted for. I voted for so many different people. I, I you know, I voted for for Democrats. I voted for Republicans, and and I voted for Libertarians. And, and for me, I will no longer vote for somebody who who I think is going to compromise and. and and they're just going to be rhinos in the office as far as these Republicans. I'm not the kind of guy that, that goes down the line and, and will vote for only Republicans. Uh, but I have in the past, like I said, uh, voted for people because I, I was concerned that if I voted for a libertarian, it would take away that Republican vote, and then we just have another Democrat in office. But now my, my opinion is that – we we have a choice between you know a a big government you know uh, you know more entitlement candidate and we have a choice between a crony capitalist candidate where they're going to make these backroom corporate deals and and make it so these these uh, big uh, corporations aren't paying taxes when they're producing and earning so much income. For me, this is this is not a choice. When I see that, that's no that's no choice. And this is what Ronald Reagan said. You know, it's people can't see a difference between the parties. You know, we need a bold difference. Uh, you know, uh, not pale pastel uh, pastel colors. You know, that we need somebody who is going to to stand for something and have a clear difference uh, in their message between the other candidates out there. And and for me, the Libertarian Party is where it's at now. Now you have some some grassroots like Tea Party. Uh, you know people that that I support, but there is a difference though in that because these people, you know, in some ways I I disagree, especially on social issues. When you when you talk about you know uh, uh, marijuana and you talk about uh, you know uh, other other kind of topics such as that, like gay marriage and and, and such, you know I, I disagree with them on that. I, I'm I'm a social liber uh, liberal basically, a classic liberal. And, uh, you know, I, I want to talk with you a little bit about uh, marijuana. We've had here in Washington some very, very big changes, and I'm sure you're aware of. Uh, we, we passed the, uh, the recreational marijuana, and I wanted to hear what your, your thoughts on that was. Excellent. I was at uh, the Olympia Hemp Fest yesterday speaking to this issue, and um, the I-502, um, all that it did, it did not legalize. And a lot of folks like to say, uh, you know, pot is legal in Washington State, pot is not legal in Washington State. All the I-502 did is decriminalize a minuscule amount of uh, marijuana or cannabis. Um, and, uh, and, of course, there were some, uh, you know, some very strict uh, specific application to um, THC-included uh, products, uh, food products, uh, butters, things like that. Uh, but in Washington State, cannabis is still illegal. It's just been decriminalized. If you, and, and, and the indicator is look at the schedule. Look at the drug schedule. THC is still listed as a Schedule I drug, the same schedule, uh, the, the, the same rating that the, uh, the federal government has got it in. Uh, which is which is why uh, you uh, you may even be a, a medical marijuana grower and you'll have your 15 plants and and, and um, you know everything is uh, you know everything is being done in accordance with Washington state law. The federal government, the DEA, would come in and they'll shut you down. They'll arrest you. This is what happened uh, to the Kettle Falls Five. Um, they had you know they had uh, like a, a county auditor come in and just kind of check out their plants. Everything was on the up and up. A week later, uh, they had the DEA come in with the exact same county. Uh, uh, individual, and now they were um, under arrest because of federal violation. So until we do, uh, and until we enact real legalization, um, it, it, I, I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid for people in, in their confusion. You talked, uh, you know, you talk about people who are kind of uh, uninformed, unaware, and they think, oh, we won with the I-502, uh, but we really haven't done anything. 
It's, it's baby steps at best. We need to focus on real legalization. And there's not one individual in Olympia, in the House or the Senate, who is really pushing for real legalization. I have yet to see one individual stand up. My opponent gets a lot of kudos from people who say, he's good enough. He's been helping out the medical marijuana um, you know, family, and we're, we're, we're OK. We're good with him because he's, he's close enough. And I like to say to him, you know, when I'm at events like Olympia Hemp Fest, uh, when is he speaking? Where's his booth at? He's not there because he really doesn't care. He doesn't care about the issue. He has no vested interest in liberty, in freedom, and in real legalization. That's what I'm about because I understand the difference between the minuscule amount of decriminalization and real legalization. So, so let's talk about marijuana in general here, and le- and why exactly do you support it? I le- let me play devil's advocate here and uh, and and say what the the opponents of legalization of marijuana would say. Is, you know, it's uh, it tears apart the fabric of our uh, you know of our uh, of our civilization here. You know, we got people who are going to get addicted to this gateway drug and. Uh, and, and then it's going to make more crime and things like that. I, what are your thoughts on that? If you look at the history of cannabis um, a, as part of this war on drugs, it actually comes down to exactly what you were talking about with, uh, with crony uh, corporate, uh, uh, corporate uh, cronyism. Um, if there was uh, the hemp industry was directly challenging, uh, I believe it was a plastic startup Dow company, a Dow Corporation, um, and if they – if we could get the country, which was heavily dependent on hemp products at the time in the early 1900s, get them away from that, then they can become dependent on plastic-based products. So there was a lie that was told that, that really uh, put this stigma out there because now hemp, which is non-THC-based, uh, tie it in with cannabis and THC, tie it in with the drugs, uh, demonize it, and guess what? You get this corporation who had their lobbies and, and so on and so forth uh, now in power, and here we are 100 years later still believing the same lies. It's the, you know, we're carrying the, the moral fabric of America if we were to do this. If you want to talk about uh, products that destroy families, let's talk about uh, people who have real addiction uh, with alcohol. My family struggled uh, quite heavily, you know, a lot of aunts, uncles, mothers, fathers, with, uh, with alcohol. Uh, the one exposure that we've had with uh, marijuana in our family was when my mother, over 20 years ago, my, my mo- uh, stepmother, uh, had ovarian and uterine cancer, um, and she was wasting away. She, didn't, she did not uh, do so well with the, with the cancer treatment. And my father said, why don't we try um, marijuana? It'll help you be able to hold down some food. And she fully recovered. She gained her body weight back, and now she's 20-plus years in remission. So I've seen, um, I've seen the positive impact that cannabis use has had medically in my family directly. So I'm very passionate about it uh, for that reason alone, that it saved the life of my mother. So, okay, so you mentioned alcohol, and I, I just want to be clear. Are you, are you saying that alcohol should be banned? I'm not saying alcohol should be banned. I'm saying that everything in moderation. We thought we're, as a free people, we have a responsibility to ourselves to take ownership of our own bodies. All right? If I want to have a cigarette, if I want to smoke a joint, if I want to go out and have a beer, I'm free to do that so long as I'm responsible for my actions. And I'm not putting anybody else in harm's way. I shouldn't be smoking a Marlboro and blowing the smoke in the face of one of my small children, obviously. I'm a smarter person than that. But that doesn't mean that I can't go out to a bar, enjoy a few drinks with my wife, and uh, you know, maybe uh, step outside and have a cigarette. It doesn't make me a criminal. It doesn't make me uh, an immoral individual. All right? And though there is a stigma that, you know, oh, smoking is bad and they've got this, you know, uh, the truth hurts or, or whatever push, um, there's this control arm of, of the government, Republicans and Democrats both, uh, that they, you know, and we tried it before with prohibition on, on, on alcohol. No, we don't need the government controlling our lives or regulating our lives or telling us what we should or should not be doing. We need to be able to make those, uh, make those choices and take responsibility for the actions of our choices. Well said, well said. So, you know, I want to touch a little bit on the history of hemp. I, I was doing some reading a little while ago, and um, it, it was actually uh, about what you were talking about as far as the crony capitalism. Um, hemp was a major uh, major uh, production uh, crop that we were doing here in America, and uh, it, we had all these farmers that were in support of hemp and growing hemp and things like that. And then the textile industry, as you were saying, came in, and they actually changed the name, and, and they started referring it 
it, to it as marijuana. And then all these farmers, they didn't know what it, what marijuana was. They had no idea what what that was talking about when they referred to it as marijuana. Slowly, people started, you know, started to realize what they were talking about. But I think it's important to note that. Marijuana was banned very deceptively, and and it was in fact crony capitalism. I mean, it was it was an attempt from the textile industry to basically, uh, you know, get people away from uh, from hemp to other products that were being incentivized from the government. So, you know, if, for me, I I totally agree with where you're coming from, and I definitely agree. You know, hey, if if I want to make bad choices, if I want to, you know, if I want to go and do something that's going to risk my health, as long as I'm not affecting anyone else, you know, that that's that's up to me. I don't think that marijuana should be illegal any more than I think that alcohol should be illegal or cigarettes should be illegal or, you know, a a big gulp Slurpee should be illegal as, uh, you know, uh, former mayor uh, Michael Bloomberg in New York tried to do. So, you know, uh, all these things, it's it's part of that growing nanny state that that we see, you know, that they're trying to tell us what is best for us, that we can't make the, the, the best decisions for us and that, our poor decisions will tear apart the fabric of society. So, so I totally agree with what you're, where you're coming from. And, and you know, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't say it better. By the way, to our listeners, I just want to point out, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Stephen, are, are you a rocket scientist? Is that correct? Yes, I am. I uh, have a bachelor's of science degree from the University of Washington in aeronautics and astronautics, which is rocket science. That's awesome. So, so this is coming from a rocket scientist, everyone. It, it is. It's not rocket science, all right. It, it, but, but you know, his, his word on this, I, I, I definitely agree with where you're coming from. Uh, you know, I, and I want to, I want to actually cover some of the other topics we just brought up here. Uh, you mentioned the gas tax and and all the stuff that you guys are doing in, in regards to that. Can you give our listeners a little bit of uh, insight as to what's going on with that? Absolutely. Right now, there's a bipartisan push. Um, and it's actually being uh, being kicked off by the Republican Party um, to uh, to pass what they're they're trying to refer to it as a transportation package. It, it's a gas tax hike, and uh, they've said, well, it's going to be no more than uh, 10 to 11 cents, uh, 11 and a half cents at best. Uh, that's the Republican version, uh, and that's per gallon. So an additional 11 and a half cents per gallon. The Democrats are saying we want at least 20 cents per gallon. Um, and, and so, as we're looking at the as we're looking at the gas tax that we already have in Washington State, uh, when we're pumping, you know, three dollars and ninety cents, you have to understand that without current gas taxes, um, we would be pumping about three dollars and fifty cents. All right. So the three ninety that we're that we're pumping now would actually be three fifty. If we were to implement an additional gas tax, we'd be looking at four ten or more. For that same gas that really, after uh, you know, after price of production and federal taxes would be 350. So you're looking at almost a dollar's worth of total state tax per gallon on our fuel. This is a very, very dangerous, uh, dangerous situation to be in because they're trying to say that if we don't do this, we're not going to get the highways, we're not going to get these projects finished. One of the big pushes uh, from the News Tribune, which said that I'm living in a a libertarian utopia if I think that uh, we don't need a gas tax. Thank you very much for, you know, for for that confidence, uh, News Tribune. Um, But my, you know, my my opponent also uh, heavily supports uh, this gas tax because he wants his pork. He wants the 167 interchange finished. Now, this is a project that's been stalled for over 40 years, all right? And they're, t- and they're saying that the price tag uh, is going to be in the ballpark of $1 billion. Now, I think that you can get it done for at least half of that. So we're looking at $500 million. So how do we come up with $500 million? There are three projects that I love to point out because in those three projects alone, the waste, not the cost of the projects, but just the waste equals $650 million, so almost one and a half times the amount that it would take to fix the 167 interchange or to com- complete that 40-year-old project. The 520 bridge has got over $400 million of recorded waste. The, boring, uh, the Big Bertha Boring Tunnel uh, project stall underneath the downtown Seattle uh, is upwards of $120 million in rising because of that damn stalled billion-dollar machine. And the Highway uh, 16 interchange um, in Tacoma, uh, just uh, just uh, on the Tacoma side of the of the bridge, 
um, is about $120 million as well because of the mistakes that they've made. So those three projects, and trust me, there are more, uh, is $650 million of waste alone. All we need out of our government is accountability. And the fact that I'm calling for no gas tax increase and instead for accountability and reform in Olympia, I've been told that I'm living in a libertarian utopia because both of the major parties want to just throw more money at the incompetence and negligence that's coming out of Washington State Department of Transportation. Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I just have to point out that, that I, you know, I've seen firsthand a lot of the stuff that's going on down here. We have the, uh, the, the bridge debacle that's going on, mm-hmm. and uh, we've had uh, – in Vancouver, we've had citizens that have voted against this bridge – Time and time again, uh, and and you know what the the, the people the, in the in charge they are just like oh okay you know what we're gonna ignore your votes and we're gonna go through it anyway and it to me it, this is this is crony capitalism at its best a- and also this is this is government waste at its best because like all government projects they start out with one kind of budget. And then it's, it's suddenly, oh, we need this now, and we need this, and the costs just continue to go up. So whatever number they give you, expect it to at least double by the time it's finished. And, you know, I, I, I always like to go back to history, and, and you know, not too far ago, uh, Ronald Reagan, again, I'm going back to Ronald Reagan. You know, he once said that government doesn't get the money that they need. They find uses for the money that they have. I think, Correct. and I, I think you probably would agree with me on this, Stephen, that, uh, you know, it, in terms of this, if we had a, a smaller budget, we would still get things done. We would just find more efficient ways to do it. What do you think? No, you're absolutely right. The CRC project alone, I believe that the number was on order of $100 million, again, that they wasted for uh, the, the surveys, the studies, the legal battles, for a project that never even broke ground, that nobody wanted. And the number, the, the dollar amount of waste, on just getting up to something that never took off blows my mind. Not only that, but part of that was a $10 million museum that they were going to use to house any artifacts that they found while they were digging for that, uh, um, you know, uh, for that bridge, right? So a $10 million museum to kind of, uh, you know, pay, uh, you know, pay off uh, whatever Indian tribes or historical societies. So you're talking, it's just waste and pork and, and earmarks, and it's, it, it just makes me upset. It makes me, it makes me mad. And you're, you're talking about, um, you know, what, what are we going to do with the, the money that we've got? Yeah, we've got more than enough money already. And not only am I saying no additional gas tax, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be standing up when I win, and I'm going to say, we need to, I'm going to be saying, we need to cut money here. Well, I'm looking at another $250 million uh, revenue cut um, in the state to eliminate uh, non-reckless, um, non-violent uh, traffic, um, you know, uh, traffic stops. So uh, speeding, 11 miles over on the interstate. When everyone else is driving 68 and you get tagged for 71 in a 60 zone, I, I want that to go away. I want to change the RCW. And if we can stop speed traps, that also takes about another $250 million away. And everyone says, well, how are you going to replace that money? We don't. We don't replace that money because the state doesn't need it. The state needs to prioritize their spending. They need to minimize their spending. They need to get back to the basics and do what the state government, the constitutional bounds uh, of the state, are supposed to be doing. And the crap that we're spending money on and wasting money on is not the way that the state needs to be run. So I'm planning on going in there with a hatchet. I just want to tear through the RCWs and look for every source of additional income, uh, uh, revenue uh, creating uh, taxes and fees and fines. I just want to start hacking. And I want to make it as bloody as possible because this state needs somebody to really just go in and start cleaning house. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Hey, Stephen, uh, we got to take a quick commercial break. Would you mind sticking with us for a little while longer? No, I'm here as long as you want me. All right. Thanks, man. All right. So, uh, guys, we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. I see we have some callers here. Uh, we're going to get to you guys in a second. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to be taking your calls. So we'll be right back. Support On The Move. Help us make this podcast bigger and better. You can do this by going to our store and purchasing one of our hundreds of products. 
All designs are original and made for patriots like you. Just go to cafepress.com slash on the move show. We appreciate your support. Hi, I'm Latasha Worley, and I work with candidates to creatively and effectively communicate their message to voters. I offer professional graphic design services from yard signs to flyers, from logos to vehicle magnets. Email me today at latashawurley at gmail.com. That's L-A-T-O-S-H-A, Worley at gmail.com, for a quote on items for your campaign. Broadcasting from deep within occupied territory on the far left coast, you're listening to On the Move with Mac Worley the Third. Stand up, speak out, and get on the move. And now your host, Mac Worley the Third. All right, we're back. And uh, when we last left, we had Stephen Nielsen, the Libertarian Party candidate running for District 2, I believe, position 2. Let me double check that here. Yes, District 2, position 2. He's running for state representative. He's on the line. Uh, We're taking your listener calls and uh, reading your emails, so feel free to join in on the conversation. If you want to do that, give us a call. The number of the show is 619-924-0986. Again, that's 619 924-0986, Nine two four zero nine eight six, or you can email the show at talk at onthemoveshow dot com. We have Justin on the line. He would like to make a quick comment. Hey, what's on your mind, Justin? Hey, how's it going? This is Justin from Los Angeles. I'm a fellow libertarian. I just wanted to say that um, just keep on with your p- campaign, Steve. I know it's hard fighting with the big boys, but you're doing a j- good job, and you probably don't have the same funding. And you hit it on hit it on the head when you said everything in moderation. That's that's kind of how the Libertarian Party rolls. Awesome. Well, thanks for your input. Hey, Stephen, uh, you're on the line. You want to comment back? Yeah, absolutely, Justin. Look, let me let me just say one thing. My campaign has raised over thirty two hundred dollars, three thousand two hundred dollars, and we are fighting, and we are actually on par, uh, fairly even, with an individual who's raised over one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and he spent right now uh, about $35,000 in the last PDC report. So what he has spent is 10 times more than what I've even raised. And you want to know what? We're polling fairly evenly. So it's not about money. It's not about that corporate sponsorship that he has. It's about the message. It's about the truth. People are hungry for a change, and the Libertarian Party, a viable Libertarian Party, is giving them exactly what they're hungry, what they're hungry for. So thank you very much for your call. All right. So, uh, and again, thanks for calling in, Justin. All right, Stephen, I, I want to talk a little bit more uh, about your campaign specifically and uh, and some of the other obstacles you guys have have been experiencing. Uh, I I know from hearing some stories about uh, Chris Rockhold that there has been some uh, sign vandalism and things like that. Are you guys having anything like that on your end? We absolutely are having that on our end. The, the, uh, our opponents have said, you know, this is all part of the game, and uh, it happens. We lose our small signs. We lose our big signs. Uh, there's been sign vandalism that's targeted specifically at the Libertarian Party, um, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of folks have said, well, those Democrats are, are just a, a crafty bunch. Well, guess what? In our uh, district, um, it's not the Democrats. Actually, the Republicans are, are attacking Libertarians quite uh, quite hard, and down in uh, Chris Rockhold's district as well, it's the Republicans who are attacking Libertarians. And, and I like to think of it this way. Does it make me upset? Yes, it does make me upset because we don't have a lot of money to throw at signage, um, and they are in violation of Washington state law. It isn't uh, a class three mi- uh, misdemeanor for them to steal, vandalize, destroy, or remove signs that are legally placed. We are currently considering legal action uh, in the city of Yelm against my opponent's uh, direct uh, contacts, who are the ones who have been uh, vandalizing our signs. Um, and they've actually spray-painted our signs and reposted them, and they're using them as, as uh, billboards to post uh, signs of uh, notice of, uh, of evacuation or, or eviction. Um, so we, we know who is, re- is responsible and who's using these signs. 
Um, and uh, and I, I believe that they're just testing the waters to see how serious we are. So we are uh, strongly considering um, legal action against uh, against our opponents, uh, specific to uh, uh, to the you know the law that they're breaking. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't fully upset me because look, if we're not taking flag, that doesn't mean we're over our target. So the fact that we've got the bombs going off around us means we're hitting them right where we want to hit them. Absolutely, yeah, and and, and you know I, I just want to point out uh, I'm I'm naming names today, so uh, you know th this kind of stuff is really frustrating to me. You know we're supposed to have an honest and, and uh, an honest political process that has integrity, and, and we have people like uh, Paul Harris, for example. Uh, he I believe he's a Republican running out here in this district, and uh, you know it, it, he he's on record here, uh, and I'm I'm looking at some of the transcripts from the uh, from the text messages that he sent to Chris Rockhold, where he he's saying that you know he he's taken down these signs, and I just want to point out that according to the state law out here, you know a person may not remove, deface, or lawfully place political advertising, including. Uh, yard signs or billboards without permission, knocking over or stealing a sign uh, are both considered third-degree misdemeanors and may carry up to 90 days in jail and a 1,000 fine for each account. So this is, I mean, this is serious. This isn't just somebody just knocking over a sign and, and, and being a jerk and nothing you can do about it. I mean, this is actually against the law. These people are violating the law. Correct. And if, if the um, uh, total amount of their uh, destruction uh, or defacement exceeds two hundred and fifty dollars. It becomes a class C felony. So this is yeah. very this is taken very seriously in the state of Washington because that's our private property that they're destroying. Exactly, and, and, and the class yeah. C felony that's punishable for up to five years in prison and a ten thousand dollar fine. So you know it, this is this is something that's going on. Paul Harris right now he's he's doing this to to a libertarian candidate Chris Rockhold down here in Vancouver, and and honestly it needs to stop, but we have a text message where he's saying he, and he's admitted that he's done this. So, you know, this to me is really frustrating. Something needs to happen about this. This guy is corrupt. Exactly, Mac. And it's not it's like it needs to be said because, like you said, you're naming names. My opponent's uh, direct contacts, his direct inner circle of friends, uh, are the ones who are posting these uh, eviction notices on a spray on my spray painted sign. So we know that that our Republican incumbent opponents are very intimately familiar with what's happening, and they shrug it off that eh, it just happened. It doesn't just happen. Crime doesn't just happen and definitely shouldn't be shrugged off. This is our personal property, and they know that as small dollar campaigns that this is very painful to us. So what we have to do is we have to show them that we're serious. These are not uh, you know, fringe Democrats or you know, upset Democrats. These are Republicans attacking libertarians because of what the libertarian movement and what we're doing in the state means to the GOP and the Republicans in this state and across the nation. Now, we actually have a lot of Democrats that have crossed over and a lot of independents, but what it means to the Republican Party um, is that we're kind of seeing their death throes. We are seeing um, the realization of the, uh, of the end of the Republican Party because there is no uh, real leadership. There's no real message that's biting with anybody anymore. 53% of Americans don't self-identify with either one of the major parties. So if you cut that in half, I believe that about 21% of Americans identify, yes, I am an absolute Republican. That's not good for them. That's really not good. They see us as a direct threat to what they were supposed to be, the, the, the party of low taxation, uh, small government, fiscal responsibility. They are no longer that party. The Libertarian Party is. That's why they do not want us to succeed. Absolutely. You know, Libertarian Party, you guys are the tip of the spear right now. You, you guys are the tip of the spear. This is, this is what the Republican Party was supposed to be doing, the, the, the small government people. You know, and, and when I spoke about before, as far as you know, people not wanting to vote for the Libertarian Party because they're afraid it's going to take away a Republican vote, well, let's turn that around. Voting for the Republican Party is taking away a Libertarian vote. You, you know that this is the party of the most liberty people. You know it. has it, been said, and this isn't my quote, but you know it, the Libertarians think that that you know gay couples should be able to protect their marijuana plants with firearms. You know it's it's the party that that is right down the middle when it comes to to liberty. Everybody gets gets their fair share. Everybody gets the, their fair shot, not fair share, uh, but fair shot. And you know everybody is treated treated equally. This is this is 
the you know uh, the Declaration of Independence uh, principle of all men are created equal. You know, so I I, I really am am fascinated with the the Libertarian Party. What's happening right now? It's it's an amazing time because I, I really think that now is the time that a leader can emerge. We have people that are just hungry for this kind of leadership. People that are just looking for something. So those bold colors that, that that we talked about. Something that sets them apart and. For me, the Libertarian Party is the answer. The, I mean, and again, not not all Libertarian candidates in, in regards to that, because you have to know the candidate. You know, some of them are you know just in there with the with the label and not necessarily even endorsed by the party. But a Libertarian candidate that that is strong on uh, constitutional principles, small government, equal rights, those kind of things. I, I will absolutely back one of those candidates, and I think that so many people right now are hungry for that, those kind of candidates. So, hey, hey Steve, Correct. we have Max, a, uh, Max, yeah, just yeah. real fast, on that message, there have been several Republicans who have called me, and they said, I'm taking a chance on you. You had better stick to your principles. And I tell them, what else have I got? I am that candidate. I am going to do exactly what I say. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, we have a caller here. We got James on the line. Uh, you want to make a few comments here, James? What's on your mind? Oh, but of course. As Stephen's saying, I've met Stephen. This is James Apker, 7th Legislative District out in uh, northeastern Washington. And I've gotten the same message from a lot of people in my district. They're sick and, they're sick and tired of the, the two-party system. They're sick and tired of the politics. That gets nothing done. Absolutely. Hey, James, are you are you running or are you actually uh, a, a representative? No, I'm actually running. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, well, wait, do and, you have any other comments or thoughts? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, the district I live in, or the district that I have here. Most I, my district covers literally five counties. It's one of the largest in the state. So I've got a couple of counties that are strictly Republican, and those folks have told me we don't want you, we don't need you. We want a Republican in there because that Republican fits our ideals. And I said, well, that's fine. But when is the last time you actually had a Republican treat the size of government? And then they stopped me. Well, I don't know. I said, has our current representation done that? Well, yeah. I said, really? Well, have you heard of the Real Hope Act? And they asked, well, what is the Real Hope Act? I said, well, it's Washington State's version of the DREAM Act. And they said, well, no, we've never heard of that. And I said, I'm not surprised. <laughs> so, so, James, are you running as a libertarian then? I am running as a libertarian. Yes, sir. And, and what was your district again? Seventh Legislative District. Yes, sir. Okay. So, and you know, I definitely agree, James. There is, it seems like that the party that is supposed to be, you know, the Republican Party, that they're supposed to be the small government party. This is, we hear this bashed over our head over and over again. And I continue to see the government grow with Republicans. And I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Stephen, did you have anything you want to comment on that? Yeah, absolutely, James. Thank you so much for calling in. James is one of our uh, our 12, our pride of lions. We've got 12 legislative candidates in the state of Washington um, that are uh, that are you know pushing to make it through uh, past uh, past the general election and and, and uh, really start making a change. I think James has a really good uh, really good shot. Um, he he represents um, a, 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 I guess a, a portion of this uh, this group that is um, that, that's starting out. And, and James has done an amazing job. He wrote an amazing article that, uh, that said, you know, uh, you know, these are the mistakes that he's made. You know, I made 10 mistakes uh, um, and before I learned how to, do, you know, how to do it right. And he was talking about doorbelling and knocking on people's, uh, knocking on people's doors, getting signatures for, um, you know, for his campaign. And, and um, it, it's great because uh, we're not quick. Uh, some folks are new. Some folks have been around the block a few times. But James represents the future of what our candidates uh, are. Uh, I, I believe that James has a great shot of, of being elected. And if not, James has taken a pledge to run at least two more times. He's not giving up. And, and not only that, but each one of the 12 candidates, uh, we, uh, we are pushing for them in 2015 to recruit three additional candidates for local races, for your water districts, fire districts, city councils, mayors, and then those, all of those candidates 
uh, you know, 48 of us are going to go forward into 2016, we're going to recruit three more. So, so by the time you get to 2016, you're going to see this exponential growth of candidates. And James uh, is just kind of the epitome of what that, uh, what that fierce uh, uh, passion is for the libertarian movement. We're not going away. We're not afraid to fail because in our failure it's success because we learn what works, what doesn't work, and we're passing that knowledge on and we're growing locally, and we are going to take this state back. There is a solid libertarian movement. So thank you, James, for what you're doing out there on the east side of the state. No, thank you, Stephen. Jeez, I don't, I don't get to talk to you guys enough as it is. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I can tell you this, is that in my district, the, the lower part of the district, which is basically Spokane County, North Spokane County, Lower Stevens County, and some of Ponder A, are just, they want something else. They want another choice. They want to be able to live free. They want to be able to express themselves and not be punished for it through taxation, through the IRS, through other governmental means. And <clears throat> I've been seeing that a lot. I've been seeing that more and more every single day. So Exactly. The people are hungry for a change. Uh, campaigns like mine over here on the west side uh, of the state, campaigns like James's over on the east side of the state, we are hearing the same thing. People are tired of Patriot Act Republicans. People are tired of uh, my opponent, which he calls himself a Puget Sound Republican, which means he's not a Republican. He's, he's a rhino, and, and they, they flaunt it. Um, you know, we talked about the DREAM Act, uh, you know, the HOPE Act here. My opponent, uh, J.T. Wilcox, voted for the Senate bill and the House bill version um, of, the, uh, of the DREAM Act in Washington State. He voted for Obamacare exchanges. Uh, he voted for um, the expansion of Common Core. These are not Republican Party uh, line votes. He is all over the place, and he is absolutely supporting Democrat values, big government status authoritarian values. James is seeing it out in the uh, out on the east side of the state. Um, the people are starting to see it. Um, they just need to be told and reminded, hey, this guy that we're running against really isn't a Republican in what you believe Republicanism is supposed to be. You want a Republican to be a small government, minimum taxation uh, kind of uh, kind of candidate. And the guys that are sitting there with R's by their names are not those people. Absolutely. The Republican it Party voters need to wake up and see that the Libertarian Party represents that aspect, the small government fiscal responsibility aspect of, uh, of, of what they want. Hey, James, where can people go to read this article that you wrote? It is libertarianleadership.org. Thank you. All right. Awesome. And, uh, and, hey, James, do you have a website that, uh, that people can go to to get some more information about you? I do most of my stuff is actually on Facebook, so it's actually Elect James Apker on Facebook. The website is electapker.com. All uh, right. Anybody can email me. Give me a call. My I will if you want. I can give you my phone number. You call me day or night. I'll answer any question you want. Yes, sir. I'm not afraid and, uh, of it. Apker is spelled A T K E R. So is it, is that right? A P K E R Alpha Papa Kilo Echo Romeo. Oh, okay, Apker. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, it, for everybody who's uh, who's listening and want to get some more information on him, uh, feel free to check out his website and his Facebook as well. Thanks so much for calling in, James. Uh, at this point, we got to cut to a, one more commercial break, and we'll be back with more with Stephen Nielsen after this. Don't go anywhere. Support On The Move. Help us make this podcast bigger and better. You can do this by going to our store and purchasing one of our hundreds of products. All designs are original and made for patriots like you. Just go to cafepress.com slash on the move show. We appreciate your support. Hi, I'm Latasha Worley, and I work with candidates to creatively and effectively communicate their message to voters. I offer professional graphic design services, from yard signs to flyers, from logos to vehicle magnets. Email me today at latashaworley at gmail.com. That's L-A-T-O-S-H-A, worley at gmail.com, for a quote on items for your campaign.
broadcasting from deep within occupied territory on the far left coast. You're listening to On the Move with Mac Worley the Third. Stand up, sneak out, and get on the move. And now your host, Mac Worley the Third. I am Mac Worley the Third, and this is On the Move. We are in the second hour right now, and thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. Uh, we have Stephen Nielsen on the line right now. He's a Libertarian Party candidate running in District 2 for Position 2 uh, in uh, Washington State. Stephen, are you there? Absolutely. All right. So uh, if you could give our listeners a little bit of information about your website, social media, things like that, so that they can find some more information about you, how they can get involved in your campaign, and what specifically you would like them to do uh, do for the campaign if they're interested. Great. My website is uh, www.stephennielsen.com. That's S-T-E-V-E-N-N-I-E-L-S-O-N.com. Uh, from there, you can get a link to our Instagram, our Twitter feed, our, our Facebook uh, page as well. Um, we've uh, we've been exploding since the voter pamphlets come out. We've got we've had a lot of uh, a lot of interest. What we need at this point, though, are uh, small private donations. Uh, like we had, uh, covered in the last segment, uh, our signs are being defaced. It's about getting our name out there. It's about being able to uh, uh, to print out our door hangers and get you know get the big signs that uh, they get that name recognition so that people can see uh, you know yeah we've uh, we know who this guy is. He's uh, you know he's a legitimate candidate because we've seen his name every single day out on the side of the street, uh, which is which is why the Republicans and some of our Democrat uh, opponents have been destroying our signs. They don't want people to know who we are. So what I need people to do is go to my website, donate one dollar, donate five dollars, donate donate five hundred dollars if you can. Um, if you live locally, uh, sign up. Uh, contact the, the campaign and help us go door to door. We've got to get uh, at least 10,000 door hangers out. Um, and we, we were trying to do that by the primary. We're going to push for at least 15 to 20,000 uh, in the general. And if we can get that, uh, we're going to look at a pretty good uh, return on those uh, return on those numbers. So we need people who are willing to donate. Uh, you know, at least two Saturdays, four hours apiece. And just go door to door, knock on the door, uh, or you don't even need to knock. In some cases, just hang the door hanger on and try to, you know, try to get as many door hangers out there. So we need foot soldiers. We need a grassroots effort but because we don't have the hundreds of thousands of dollars that our opponents have. We're not running billboard campaigns or radio, uh, you know, radio campaigns, um, you know, on, on regular broadcasts. Um, so we've got to do it at the grassroots level. So if you've got $5 to give, please go to my website. Um, please uh, check out my Facebook page. Uh, like us on Facebook. Share our Internet memes. Uh, share our statuses. Um, and, and just get the message of liberty out because this isn't just about Washington State. What we're doing in Washington State uh, is, uh, is really impacting and sending ripples across the rest of the nation because we have a winning uh, formula here in Washington State. Uh, we are, we are, uh, one, once we are elected, suppose that I'm elected, I'll be the highest um, uh, level of, uh, of elected official for the libertarian in the entire nation. And, um, and, and that's a huge thing. That's a huge thing. So we need to look at this as not just a local race for a small state house. Um, if elected, and if I am the only one who happens to be successful in the state, um, and no other uh, uh, libertarians are elected uh, in, in standard general election races across the rest of the, the nation, I will be the highest ranked elected libertarian in the entire nation. So I need support from everybody in the nation. Absolutely. That's a, that's a big deal. Hey, we have a, a caller here that wants to make a comment about uh, libertarianism versus republicanism. Uh, we got Thomas on the line. Hey, Thomas, you there? Yes, Matt. How are you? What's on your mind? Hello. This, um, I live in Kentucky, and uh, just recently we had an, a uh, candidate election for the Republican Party. It was uh, Mitch McConnell versus uh, Matt Bevin, who was the Tea Party candidate, and uh, he was the favorite. He was the one I voted for, and uh, me versus my par people like my parents. They're mainly establishment Republicans. They voted for Mitch McConnell, and uh, people like myself who are more libertarian and uh, more, uh, uh, I guess, uh, kind of a Tea Party uh, backed candidate. Uh, 
we went for Matt Bevan because we just pretty much had enough of uh, Mitch, and uh, but unfortunately our our efforts fell short, and Mitch McConnell got reelected. And now he's going up against Allison Grimes in the in the uh, in the primary. So um, I talked to uh, most of these. Um, I guess you can say these establishment Republicans that uh, really just go for uh, the big, bigger end, like uh, they voted for Mitch in the 2012. They voted for um, Mitt Romney, and um, it's, it's like uh, they go for the people that have the highest chance of winning, and um, the people that have the highest chance for winning are the people who are who are throwing all this money at radio and commercial ads and um and uh Matt Bevan, the uh would be candidate for the Senate, um, fell short of that because really we uh fell on deaf ears and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of Kentuckians here didn't even know who Matt Bevan was, uh, let alone vote for him. So uh I guess uh what advice would you have for people like myself who are who are again suffocated by these big establishment Republicans like Mitch McConnell, and uh, we really want to just uh, take back the Republican Party and come bring it back to uh, Reaganism, I guess you can say. Well, well, well thanks for your call, Thomas. Uh, go ahead and take that, uh, Stephen. What are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, Thomas from Kentucky, man. Thank you so much for calling. That's an amazing, amazing question. Uh, I wrote an article a, a few months back called Republicanism versus Libertarianism, um, and I spent 17 really good years in the Republican Party, and I fought hard to change the Republican Party from the inside, and it just isn't going to happen for the exact same reason that you stated here, that the, the big establishment Republicans with the, with, with the dollars and the cents um, and, the, and the backing and the, you know, these are the people who can win, um, that is going to trump every single time unless you can, in, unless they make a major mistake. And in a lot of cases, um, they, you know, they still make these mistakes. They get up and apologize and, uh, and everything's fine and they get a book deal out of it and they still get to keep their seats. Um, look, this is what we've got to focus on is that uh, in Washington State specifically, 30% of the state-level races for Senate and House are unopposed. So what can you do? Don't be afraid to run for office. You may lose. You may lose twice. You may lose three times. But no, uh, no uh, candidate, no uh, elected official should get a free pass at re-election. That's the first thing that we have to do. People have to just, just suck it up and do it. You want to be on the front lines, start drawing fire. Stand up, run for office. That's the very first thing that you've got to do. The second thing that you've got to do with problems like Mitch McConnell, you can't let them get away with what it is that they're doing. Look at the people who are standing up and supporting them. All right? I'm talking specifically about Rand Paul. Rand Paul has got the ear of the Tea Party and the, the Change Republican Party movement. But where was he in being outspoken against Mitch McConnell? I believe he endorsed Mitch McConnell. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, Max, but he endorsed him. So we cannot support individuals like Rand Paul as being good enough. We need to hold them responsible for the movement that we want. And we cannot back down. And so I'm sorry that that happened out in Kentucky. Mitch McConnell does not deserve to hold his office, but we cannot quit. We have to hold him accountable. We have to hold the people who are backing him accountable. And we have to start the fire around him by holding every single uh, uh, um, incumbent accountable by making them run an election. I was told specifically when I got into this race by the Republican Party in my district that elections are not the time to have the discussions I want to have. No. I think that's the elections best time are exactly to have these discussions. Yeah, elections are exactly the time to have these discussions. So we exactly. cannot back down. Hey, Stephen, I, I want to actually play. I got a clip here of Rand Paul endorsing Mitch McConnell. You're absolutely right, but here's the audio on that. I'm going to go ahead and play it real quick for you. Here now. Senator, how are you, sir? I thought you were endorsing me, Glenn. That's why I said I'd come on your <laughs> Well, I thought, you were, I, thought, I thought you were going to announce that you're running for president in 2016. 
Oh, I have to tell you what I'm running for before you'll endorse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're Senator, playing, you're can, playing hard, hard to get this morning. Can, can, I just, just don't think that's fair. Can we start with the the the, the hardest question that I have for you, and it and it is okay. it is this: Why are you endorsing Mitch McConnell? Um, I'm here in Texas to endorse Don Huffines. We got <laughs> we got our signals crossed here. <laughs> now going back to, to Kentucky. Uh, uh, because he asked me, he asked me when there was no other body, nobody else in the race, and I said yes. And uh, well, you know, Al Gore is Al Gore has asked me to change my opinion on global warming, and I don't do that. So, <laughs> so, so, hey, Stephen, uh, I'm just curious have Have you tried asking Rand Paul for his endorsement? Because apparently, all you have to do is ask, and he'll give it out. No, man, that'd be like asking somebody if I can borrow their needle. I don't want what he's selling. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it, you're absolutely right. I actually had no idea that he uh, he endorsed McConnell, and, and I've already been on shaky ground with uh, with Rand Paul already, and this kind of just puts it over the top. I I don't I don't like this guy now. I, there's there's nothing that this guy can do that's gonna gonna make up for this. M- Mitch McConnell is is one of the worst of the worst of the rhinos here, and he's he's part of the problem. To to endorse him, even if it's you know, it, it, because there was nobody else in the race or because you thought it was the best thing to, for the party, that's just, it, to me, that is just wrong. Uh, endorsing somebody just because the, the, that's what the party needs, I, I totally disagree with. And you, honestly, I'd rather see that, that seat go to a Democrat than somebody who's pretending to be a conservative or a constitutionalist because at least we would know what we're dealing with and we can get the next guy in office who will actually Correct. do what what he says he's going to do. But if what Rand Paul was a man of principle and a man of character, he would have stood up and he would have said, I endorse nobody in this race. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that really bothers me. I, I really, I, I have to thank you for showing me that, that, that is a, uh, that's really incredible and um, unbelievable. So, uh, Stephen, I, I want to give you uh, a, you know, a few more minutes here, uh, you know, plug everything that's going on in your campaign. Why should people vote for you? People should vote for me because I am the best chance that we have in Washington State to stop the gas tax. Think about the gas tax and what it's going to mean for your commute, what it's going to mean for your kitchen table. Uh, Adding an additional 20 cents per gallon um, for commuters is taking food out of the mouths of their children. I've got three small children myself. And, and I look at this as a kitchen table issue because it is. We have to stop this bipartisan push. If we do not elect libertarians in uh, the election this year, we are going to have a gas tax. The only chance of stopping this tax hike is electing libertarians like myself who will stop everything that happens in the state house so long as there's a possibility that this transportation package is still on the table. This transportation package has to die. The only people who are going to kill it are libertarians like myself. I need people to go to my website, stephennielsen.com, and donate, support, get the word out from across the nation that this movement is happening in Washington State, and we need to succeed in Washington State. I'm running against one of the highest ranking Republicans and definitely the, the most uh, uh, well-funded Republican. He's the highest uh, funded Republican uh, um, in the entire state house, uh, and he's the House Minority Floor Leader, um, and I am a working class guy who's taken time, out of his, uh, taken time out of his job because I care about my family, I care about my state, I care about my community, and I care about uh, what these guys are doing, and I'm not going to let them get away with it anymore. We need libertarians in Washington State because it will flow over to Oregon, Idaho, Kentucky, Florida, California, and we will start seeing true reform and true accountability in this nation if we just have the backbone to stand up, unlike Rand Paul, unlike Rick Santorum, and say, we are liberty. We are freedom. These guys aren't getting it done. Libertarians like myself are doing it. I'm looking forward to great success in 2014 with the support of all your listeners and those who couldn't listen to us today because they are going to hear this. They're going to hear me every time that I speak. And win or lose in November, I'm not shutting up. I'm not going away because I cannot allow the gas tax to happen. Uh, As the secretary of the State Libertarian Party, I'm going to make it a key element uh, through the next legislative session that we are going to be fighting the gas tax. 
and we're going to be training individuals to run in 2015 and 2016. So if you think that by my, uh, my failure to succeed in this election means that I'm going away, it's not. By 2016, there are going to be 12 more of me, and I'm responsible for that. So please go to my website, www.stephennielsen.com, and support liberty because freedom matters to me, to my country, to my state. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. And, and you know, I, ha- I just have to tell you guys, I really, really like Stephen. Stephen, not only just, just as a candidate, but as a person, he's a really nice, personable guy, and he's on the front lines right now of liberty. Like you heard, he's not going anywhere. He will stick around. He's going to keep fighting. He's going to you know, keep being the tip of the spear as he's shown. So uh, definitely get out and support his campaign. I endorse you, Stephen, and I am really happy to know you. So thanks again for coming on the show. We're going to have to cut out and go to uh, another segment here, but I, I want to really just say thank you so much for joining us today. Mac, thank you for having me on. Anytime you want me, just let me know. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, and, and I, I'm really looking forward to having you on When You Win because I have confidence in you and, and your campaign. Your message is strong. And, you know, like you say on your website, you're doing this because freedom matters. And, and, you know, I I have to stand next to you, man. Keep doing your thing. Thank you. You too. Keep up the fight, man. All right. Will do. All right, everybody. That was Stephen Nielsen running for the Libertarian Party. He's uh, running for District 2, Position 2 out here in Washington State. We're going to cut to a commercial break. And when we get back, we're going to start with the Mac attack. So don't go anywhere. 